estimated about 375 million new sperm cells are made every day. That is crazy. We have a lot of brothers and sisters down there. <laughs> That's right. And they're coiled up in these tiny little tubes. They have to make it through a very long process of maturity. Then when they finally get to maturity, they get their college degree and then they get out <laughs> and then they have to race for the job. And only one out of all of those if not billions of cells makes it. And that's you, and that's me, and that's you. <laughs> that's everybody. If you're so, here on this, if you're watching this crazy. video, you made it, so. Welcome back to another episode of Relations, a podcast where we focus on trying to provide you with as much information that can be helpful in your life, whether that's health-related, sex, food, fitness, travel, all relationships, it. all of it. All the stuff that we enjoy, all the stuff we hope you enjoy. And things that we can share with you yeah. so we can all do it together. Yeah, and we're super excited because, again, if you have joined us already on our previous video, you know we're diving into a book that we are very passionate about, yeah. something we both read, uh, and has been very key to just understanding more about my men's own health. biological journey, my own men's health journey, and how I can better help my patients. And so I think it would be a great recommendation to help you. And we are going to be talking about... A new chapter, as I mentioned, and this one is called Come and Get It. Ah, I don't even know. What could that mean? Ejaculation and orgasm oh, is going to be the stuff. topic. Yeah. The fun part. It's going to be the fun part, which yeah. I mean, really, this book is full of all different types of uh, fun parts. Well, <laughs> true, but I feel like the last episode, the last chapter, we talked a lot about you know, the characteristics and the parts of our penis yep. and the glands mm -hmm. and building what, an erection. Yeah, all of those things. But we are now getting to the know, juicy part. Yeah, literally. So we think, uh, if we remember from our last chapter, not only is the brain extremely important, which is the big head, is the big head, we also need the little head. Uh, depending on how you refer to your own member, uh, <laughs> to be involved. And they actually connect in our spine, believe it or not. Through what? So there's an area called the spinal ejaculation center. And this is in our lower spine. And it's where basically the chemical and nervous signals come from both the brain and from the genitals to communicate with one another and say, wow. hey, it's time for liftoff and it's time for ejaculation. Very similarly to how an erection occurs, but an ejaculation requires many different chemical signals going both ways to that ejaculation center in the spine. And that's all happening very fast, I assume. It's all happening extremely fast. And what it starts by saying is, of course, the first sequence is going to be found sensory-wise. So the sensations of the genitalia of the rest of our body oh. picking up those cues and putting in the initial combination. And so it's going to be taste. It's going to be smell. Wow. It's going to be vibration. It's going to be auditory. So the breathing, the faint voice of your partner, their chapstick that you're kissing and caressing, wow. the way they smell with their fragrance. And then, of course, touch. Touch is huge. And then what it really focuses on, for men specifically, is vision and what we're seeing. Yeah. So for some men, it That's can why be, pornography is so big. For some men, all they need is maybe a flirtatious look from their partner. Wow. Sometimes they just need a vision of their neck tilted to the side with a drop of sweat going down and caressing their chest. Others need a full close-up view of genitalia hammering it out. So it's different for everybody. <laughs> what your preference is and what you've been exposed to yeah. and what you're used to um, is what's going to dictate how that launch sequence is put in. For some men, you know, you really got to amp up the vision. Uh, they're the visionary cues to uh, results in ejaculation. And again, pornography is a big problem there mm -hmm. because if you get really used to seeing something specific right. and you're not seeing that with your partner, it can create damage. And pornography also creates a sense of exaggerated reality because what we see on videos of pornography is not you know what actually goes down in real life it's a yeah, little different for sure and as we're on this topic i am not uh, anti-pornography in any sort of uh, sense i am all about balance yeah. so i always tell patients you have to make sure you're keeping a healthy balance right. with everything in your life it's and more just about the unhealthy consume 
and yeah, of and pornography. What comes secondary and right after that is going to be the brain and how it's going to be creating fantasies and memories and ideas of what's going on in that exact moment. And if they're triggering certain things like fantasies, this is going to heighten that sexual experience and release more of those neurotransmitters from the brain. Does testosterone come into play at all? Yeah. So like I mentioned, those important neurotransmitters that are released from the brain, there's two areas that are very important. One is called the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. They're kind of connected. And if you actually rammed a pencil up your nose, you would hit both of them. Wow. So they're very close uh, to the front of your head, believe it or not. And they're important in the chemicals that signal the testicles to make more testosterone. Interesting. So that testosterone that then comes from the testicles circles back through the bloodstream and into the brain. So it does this sort of way long process of going brain testicles back to brain and that testosterone is what sort of signals or amplifies the fire or the desire to increase sexuality increase arousal and to ejaculate so it's wow. very important that if you're struggling with ejaculation premature or delayed that you consider getting your testosterone screen because yeah, it could be a sign culprit. that you yeah. have a little testosterone issue testosterone makes things look smell taste feel sexier because that's really its goal its goal is to stoke the flame to yeah. make things more heightened and of course get you to orgasm that's that's the main goal of of the male hormone that's why people who suffer with low testosterone they one of the symptoms that they say it's lack of sex drive right. or lack of sexual desire sometimes is because you know the testosterone is not there to give them the sexy feeling exactly the <laughs> sexy feeling that's exactly how i would describe it in the book as well this deep brain center also releases another chemical called oxytocin you may have heard of this they actually put it this. in some ed medications it's not very effective in that way by the way just to save you some money uh, <laughs> but it's a very important attachment hormone mm. so it's also well documented to be a part of giving birth and yeah. that sort of first communication you have from mother to fetus they call it the hormone baby. of love yeah or the hormone of love hormone of attachment wow. and so uh, hormone of bonding as well so that's released during the activity and it's very important in the process of ejaculation as well we're not really exactly sure, sure what part of that process but we do know that it is typically surging as ejaculation is occurring i guess the oxytocin comes into play when we have an ejaculation or during the process the whole process it sort of kind of helps in the beginning stages and that's why some men who maybe are not as attached to their partner or maybe it's just kind of like a one time fling it can take a little bit longer for them to ejaculate because that oxytocin hormone is going to be bound to the attachment feeling so if you're not feeling attached to your partner it could actually impact your ability to have a successful or satisfactory sexual experience mm -hmm. This is another reason why some people say there could be an increased risk of depression if you have multiple sexual partners because oxytocin is such an important key player in maintaining that attachment the feeling with your, with with your, your partner. partner. Right. Interesting. And the third main hormone that is extremely important is going to be dopamine. So also another love hormone. Dopamine is also the main player in allowing you to have a second round or a third round, meaning that it's going to shorten what we call a refractory period or the time you have to wait in order to engage again. And this refraction period, I'm assuming, is different for men and women? Oh, yes. So women have a very short refractory period. So that's why sometimes they can engage in sex a lot quicker than men. This is often too why women will sometimes tell men or men maybe will tell men, that after they ejaculate, they may become like another person yes. or they kind of just everything sort of shuts down. And that's really not their fault. It's biologic. Mm -hmm. It's physiologic that after ejaculation, things are powered down <laughs> unless you got extra dopamine and you're ready to go again. Or unless you are taking those um, medications that can help you to shorten your refraction state exactly you're picking up on these things you know i'm learning something <laughs> you here are learning things <laughs> and of course let's take an example you have two people and one person is really about to prepare for that ejaculation point because all of these hormones are surging the time is running out and what we have is a backup help and that actually comes from something called the medulla which is a part of our brain stem and it releases a very specific chemical that i actually already talked about that can help slow down that ejaculation and make you be able to prolong the experience and oh. so maybe you're not quite ready and maybe some of us out there have felt that where you're like oh god it's, not right getting, now. <laughs> it's getting the time i'm not ready or my partner's not ready 
And so luckily we have this backup where the medulla release something called serotonin, like I mentioned. And so serotonin, even though it is a pleasure chemical and it does work to keep us happy, when it comes to the genitalia, it stops ejaculation. Mm. So this is why some men who are on an antidepressant like Zoloft or sertraline is the generic version, which is a very common SSRI. What it's gonna do is help you feel happier on the day to day as it's increasing your serotonin, but that serotonin is also gonna be increased in the genitalia, making it more difficult for you to orgasm. Now, that may not be a problem if you're already orgasming too quickly, but if it's been an hour, <laughs> yes and you're like well, well what's going on what's next to be very frustrating and if your doctor yeah. doesn't explain this as a possible side effect it can be extremely frustrating so just be aware that that is something that could affect you if that's you out there and you're on one of those medicines they're very very helpful they're clinically proven to be safe and effective uh, but if you're struggling to ejaculate talk to your yeah. doctor because there could be alternatives because you don't want to prolong your ejaculation too much yeah or maybe you do well, and that's you. But if you don't right. and it's bothering you, talk about it. You yeah, know? you just have to know that if you take those medications, this is something that can happen. Exactly. You know, it's a possibility. So semen, they also call in the book, the elixir of life is a oh. cocktail made of sperm and two mixers. We know because we took a bartending class how to make a cocktail. Yeah. That's we... for another talk for <laughs> another day. If you've seen one of our videos, you may have already seen us take that class. Going back to semen <laughs> or sperm. <laughs> Hold on, there's a difference, right? So semen and sperm are different things. About 10% or less is going to be sperm, which are going to be those cells the that DNA are trying information. to carry on life. So 10% is that. And the other part of the semen is? Seminal vesicle fluid. And which is made out of? Fluid. Mostly made of protein. There's some carbohydrate, mostly fructose, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Fructose is the type of sugar we see in fruit. And right. so it does kind of give that bit of a sweet taste for mm, some people. I've heard of it. There's a lot of alkaline substances too. So there can be a lot of bitterness to it. Um, but in general, it's mostly enzymes, proteins, and a little bit of carbohydrates. Scientifically speaking, the reason for that is because is supposed to neutralize the vagina. Good. Thinking, yes. So all of the things that happen in our body have a purpose. So the seminal vesicles producing this fluid and the prostate producing that fluid, the goal is to allow that sperm to reach the egg. So it's going to go through quite a hazardous environment. It's a very survive. acidic vagina. So it yeah. needs to go through there. It also needs to have enzymes that allow it to break apart energy so it keeps propelling itself forward. Wow. And it needs to feed itself. So all those things are there to help that sperm reach the egg. But again, 99.9999999% of sperm never reach an egg. Wow. If they did, it would be people everywhere. <laughs> so celebrate. You made it. You, you made are 0.00001. You got here. You were a fast swimmer. Yeah. We all are. Now we got to talk about the problems. So of course, we hinted yeah. on them a little bit with premature ejaculation. And that's where someone is just ejaculating too fast. And as we talked about, it's an extremely complicated process. There are so many things going in and out. And if something goes off, that can result in premature ejaculation. Usually, this is classified as a man being unable to prolong their ejaculation enough to please their partner, or you're able to go longer than two minutes. You're not considered to be experiencing premature ejaculation, but most of us probably want to go longer than two minutes. How long do you think the average person Six minutes. You're a genius. It's actually five and a half minutes, but that well, is extremely close. I read this book a couple of months ago, right. so it's not like, <laughs> no. Yes, and this condition actually occurs in one in four men, so it's very common. Wow. Again, another reason why it's great to have the dialogue yeah. and the conversation with your medical provider because they've come across it before and there are medications to help. Again, we want to work on that serotonin. So by pumping that serotonin up, you can take an extremely low dose antidepressant, which will have very little impact on your emotions or your you know, anxiety or depression because it's not being used for that, but it's enough to where it can prolong that ejaculation. Other patients may consider things like ED medication. There are some clinical studies that show sildenafil and tadalafil may prolong the ejaculation period, uh, but you have to be a little careful there because they can actually shorten it for other patients. So mm -hmm. understand this is going to be a journey. This is going to take some time. You may even consider trying Kegel exercises, as we've yeah. mentioned multiple, multiple times. times. Something that I like to do is I personally, as you know, like to put music 
music on and I like to use it as an exercise sometimes, time, right? Man. Take time to drink some water, relax, yeah, enjoy each other, but yeah. also like how long can we make this right. go? Because it is an activity that you need to rehearse. It Bonding, is an activity yeah. that you need to practice. Um, and using those muscles and prolonging your experience is just going to make it easier for you to do that when you want to. And exactly. uh, now I'm I'm pretty good at my time. You are too, <laughs> but it's not a race. It's not a competition. <laughs> but you know, whatever works for you. Some people like it longer. Some people like it shorter. Yeah. And then the opposite part of this is taking too long to ejaculate. Mm -hmm. So this can also be another issue that patients will talk to me about. Typically, I see this in men that are a bit older, usually, again, because they have chronic medical conditions. Maybe they have a decrease in their blood flow from cardiovascular disease. Maybe they have diabetes and some sort of nervous issue where the nerves aren't firing like they should. Maybe they're taking an antidepressant and that serotonin is too high and it's preventing them from being able to ejaculate. Either way, these are conversations you should talk to your doctor about. There are many methods and ways to improve them. Them. Uh, ED medications, just as they can prolong ejaculation, they can also shorten it. So some patients oh. will see improvement there. It's really a trial and error thing with your own member. You got to figure out what's going to work best for you and understand. It never ends, right? It never you, ends. You, you keep, yes. you know, getting better and understanding, understanding more. your body. And sometimes your body will change and you adapt. I think you asked this question earlier mm -hmm. to me, um, can you have an orgasm without an ejaculation? Or what's the difference? Yeah. So ejaculation means something actually comes out. Mm -hmm. You're going to get some fluid. Mm -hmm. And orgasm is that sensation that you feel. Oh, so you don't have to have them both, right? Some men get this, especially when they're older and they'll reach out to me saying, hey, I have the orgasm, but uh, no where's ejaculation. the ejaculation? I want to have the ejaculation. And that does make sense. I think we all would prefer to have both together that's what we're used to but that's just not the way it works for everyone and you can still have an 100 percent satisfying orgasm without any fluid coming out there's actually some clinical evidence that even shows that the ejaculate doesn't necessarily increase sensation or make things better you can have an orgasm without it and wow. it can be just as satisfying but in the contrary as you mentioned we can have patients report the sensation that they've ejaculated but not felt an orgasm. And this is typically more central nervous system. So we're missing some of the key players like dopamine, serotonin, testosterone is huge there. But more commonly, it's wow. going to be patients that are having an orgasm but no ejaculate. So again, right. issues with the pipes, the muscles, the nerves, and that can be really all of it. The whole penis is pipes, nerves, and muscles and tissue. And so if there's any issues anywhere, there can be a problem. And this is why this book is so good because it actually prompts you on things that you may not be experiencing yet, but being a man yeah. can last a hundred years if yeah. you're lucky. And so some of these issues may come into play and the answers can be right here for yeah. a very low price. I think this and, thing is like 15 bucks. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, 15 bucks to learn a lot about the body, it's mm -hmm. a steal. Yeah. What's next? What's next is gonna be chapter three and you'll have to watch the third episode oh. to know. So we will see you on the next one. On the next one. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. This is so much fun. I'm so glad. We always wanted to start like a book club. And I think this is a great way to do it. It's still health information and stuff that we like to talk about. So we hope that if you haven't yet, you will. Subscribe to our channel. Like this video. Share with your friends. Post it. <laughs> Drop a comment. Why yeah. not? Tell us what you're thinking yeah. of these videos. Tell us about some information. I know we didn't cover everything. There are many other ways to improve ejaculation time. There's lidocaine wipes and sprays and all these other things that we could spend hours talking to you about. We want to just give you the high level info. Tell us what things we missed. Tell us the things you want to hear for next time. And yeah. we will see you then. Bye. Like we made it we really don't far. Think about this enough, right? Because we think about life when we think about all the issues that we have, all the things that are going on with our lives, but we forget to think that on we've been one. through a lot. Day zero, before day one, <laughs> right. we survived this yeah. massive, massive race of survival. Everyone else died. Everyone else died. <laughs> you you are alive, so <laughs> good job. Yeah.